Good afternoon. I'm Ron Ferguson. I'm, not, I'm actually going to look forward as opposed to lack backward at the evaluation. And I want to suggest to you that we are already in the early phases of a 21st century movement. Nobody has naming privileges. I like to call it the movement for excellence with equity. You can call it whatever you want to, but there are people all over the country who are stepping up, who know that we are defining our national identity for the next 100 years or so, and are trying to find ways to contribute. And there are a few things, a few facts that you probably don't know and that people who know them usually don't say in public, but I want to tell you and talk about a couple of the implications of these and try to get through it uh, quickly. The first fact is that the racial and socioeconomic skill gaps are evident by the age of two. It's not something that starts at school. It starts something that starts from the very earliest moments of life, right? And if that's true, it means we need to reach out from the earliest moments of life and reach people with ideas for and supports for what they can do differently at home, okay? It's not the programs, it's kids' lived experiences. And more generally, the entire movement should be about affecting young people's lived experiences at home, at school, with their peer group, on their job, all these different places. And people who interact with them need to know what it looks like. Okay, so a lot of what we need to do is to show people what does it look like to do things interacting with young people that will serve their long-term best interests. Now, just to show you, the, this is Early Childhood Longitudinal Survey, nationally representative data. The 1.0 line at the top is the level of the well, one-year-olds whose parents have some graduate education. Notice that this is at the age one-year-old and independent of the parents' uh, education level, they're all up there near that 1.0 line. Okay, not much difference at one years old. Then we go to, by race, and so you have white, Asian, black, Hispanic. Similarly, not much difference at age one year old. By age two, it looks like that. That's by parents' education. This is by race. There's a new study out of Stanford that shows that by, by age two, kids from less advantaged backgrounds are six months behind in language processing skills. So you've got to start from the beginning, early. Um, by age four, by parents' education, you'll see there's kids whose parents uh, did not finish high school are less than half as likely to even know their colors by age four. But you can look at all these things and you see the disparities are there. So the gap is not produced at school. It's there when kids start school. It's there when they're two years old, right? The, uh, this is by race at age four. Notice that in math and in fine motor skills, Asian kids are already ahead by age four. So the Asian stereotype and math it's there before kindergarten. It's early life experience. Okay, the evidence is accumulating that there are racial and social class differences in early childhood life experience. No reason to think it's genetics, that it's biology. But we need to distill what those early experiences are and make sure that parents know how to provide them and get support to provide them. All right. Uh, so we have a project out of the Achievement Gap Initiative here, which I had, which the, the uh, web, web address is agi.harvard.edu. There are more than 200 videos on the site of research-based presentations related to achievement issues. Anyway, the notion with uh, seeing, seeing success together is to take five basics of early childhood caregiving and saturate communities with them. So if you're in these neighborhoods, there's no way you don't know it because every place, every place you can touch a parent, the laundromat, the grocery store, the doctor's offices, the radio station, you're hearing about this stuff. Grandmothers are asking mothers, you doing that stuff with your baby? Okay. Big brothers and sisters are coming home from school. Mommy, I said it's awesome stuff that said we ought to be doing this. Okay, so there's no way you don't hear it. And these are the basic five. Always share love, not stress. Okay, babies can pick up the stress that their parents are bringing home. Care circles, people can work with mothers, say, here, you go take a hot bath for an hour, I watch the baby. Okay, just helping people. To, to manage their, their um, stress. Talk and point early and often, and real talk, not baby talk. Babies are encoding toting language from the earliest moments, and pointing at what you're talking about can accelerate their comprehension. 
Okay, so real talk, not baby hawk from the very beginning and pointing. Use math, use math and teach math words. Big, long, far, high, long, you know, what the other word, low, long. Um, and so just those magnitude words start to develop number sense, right? Not just counting toes, but counting toes is good, but doing these other things in addition. And then for helping toddlers explore objects in spaces. The fine motor skills difference that we saw for the Asians up there, over there, math skills, fine motor, appear to be linked in the brain. Uh, the evidence is just accumulating, but uh, did I turn that off myself? The evidence is just accumulating, but the idea is that the exploring objects deals with that, that um, eye-hand coordination, the, the integration, and appears to be related to, to math skills. And so helping kids, imagine a kid crawling around envisioning what's on the other side of the couch in his mind's eye, building a mental map. That's the kind of stuff we want to have kids do. And then fifth, discuss while you read with toddlers. Ask them to remember, explain, anticipate. So you have that, that nice interaction as you go in there. So the idea is we're going to saturate communities with this. We're trying to launch in two neighborhoods this coming summer. Um, and then we'll have a kit that you can use in any neighborhood across the country that you want to, and methods to do this. The other two facts, I'll just tell you right quick, because we, actually there's one chart I want to show you at the end of this, but the second chart fact is that the achievement gap is largest among the children of the most educated. Okay? For each group, the line is positively sloping. The more education the parents have, the higher the kids' test scores are. But the line is steeper for whites than it is for blacks and Hispanics. So the further you go out, the bigger is that vertical distance between the line for blacks and the lines for whites. Okay, I don't tell most audiences this, <laughs> okay? But I'm telling you, because we need to know that this is not just about poor people. This is about our kids in this room, okay? And so the things that we need to know, things we need to do, supports we need to provide, things we need to share in order to get that done. The, um, finally, the only about a third of all kids finish four-year college degrees. Blacks, Latinos, it's more like 20 or even below 20 percent sometimes. The 42 percent figure you saw earlier is that 42 percent of all kids who finish BAs are boys across all racial groups. Okay, but if only about a third kids are going to get BAs, that means two-thirds are not. What do we put in place for them? The College for All movement is a laudable movement. We need to get everybody into the college and four-year college degree pass for whom it fits. But it doesn't fit for everybody. And we have underdeveloped a system for everybody else. Okay. And so the idea is that if you imagine three kids, A, B, and C, the red, green, and the blue, there are a lot of kids like B who look around and say, everybody's better than I am at everything. Okay, I'm just behind everybody. But imagine there's a green, there's a point out there where that star is that something needs to get done in the world. Who's in the lead to get it done? B. Okay, that's B's destiny. That's B's North Star. And so we need to help kids understand that your life's work is to discover your North Star and to pursue it. You won't, always, you won't know where it is till you get there. You'll be an old person before you really know. But when you get there, you will find out that it was unique to you and you had no competition. You never had any competition. Okay? You just got to do what you can do, move it in the direction that fits the purpose that you feel at a moment in time, and when you get there, you can be successful just along with, with everybody else. Okay? I'm suggesting we need a North Star project, okay, where we pull together all the different ideas that are relevant to helping kids overcome the barriers to becoming their best selves. And you can lump a lot of stuff together under that heading. Okay? So I invite you to let's do the North Star project and let's do seeding success together. Okay? I'll stop. <laughs>